There we go. I had to figure out a way to like get rid of Mel's voice coming into uh They can't stop you. They're not cops. <laughs> They've got to tell you. Oh, okay. So Omen, <laughs> out of context, shit came through. Oh, hey guys, I got the best idea on how to steal from a bank, right? So we go in. Oh my fucking god! And then we just. <laughs> but it's so good. You just go in, right? And then we just do stuff. For like you know, and then we just start slipping in money, and we do this over a couple of years, and then we just walk out like nothing happened with all the money in our pockets. Motherfucker, that's a job. <laughs> Golly, I know that fucking K and Peel episode. Can't slip that by me, Peter. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. What is going on? Piece of weird noises. We got some echo. <laughs> oh man, how lewd. So you guys are hearing yourself? I can hear you in Discord, but your voice isn't coming through stream. Yeah, I'm trying to figure I'm trying to are you I'm trying to figure that out. Hello. Oh, there we go. There we go. I think I heard you really softly. Really soft. I didn't hear that one. Sound testing brought to you by Lionhead Gaming. All right, everyone, it's going to be a really relaxed session. Everyone's going to talk real quiet. And uh, welcome to the death arena. Oh god, the yeah. crunch! <laughs> Death. <laughs> Blood. Blood. Echo, echo. Hold echo, on. Echo, echo, echo. Hold on. Peas and carrots. Peas and carrots. Some. My sound on in game? No? I think it's. It. Hmm. Our sounds are being broadcasted and sent back to us whenever Jordan talks. So is there something going on with the connection for Discord in your sound card, maybe? Because mm. it's like transmitting our sound through your speaker when, we, when you're talking. Who has a sound card anymore? Don't worry, I'll mute it by being back in the place, and then it'll get copyrighted, and then I'll be muted. <laughs> and then oh, that is the music. Fuck you. Uh, uh, uh. This never happened. Very really quiet. Off. Like like talking like this. That's a little better. Hello. Yeah, it's a little better. That's better. Uh, yep, much better. Hmm. I'm not hearing myself now when you're talking, so that's that's an improvement. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, there it is. 
Ja. Uh. Oh. I'm not hearing anything from you now. Hello? Silence. Hello? Okay, okay. There you are. <laughs> That's fine. Get some background noise, but we can hear you. It's sort of low quality. I think it's just high gain. Like you can hear every sound around him. The gentle. F it's muffled, really but it's again. better. It's the gain's lower, I'm guessing. It's a little muffled, a little less gain on it, but I can hear you. You're right here, you need to be up here. You're not coming through stream. <laughs> Spin and I, I don't know how this works where like we can hear him here, but it's not transmitting into the stream. So it's probably OBS then? You're something not recording right? Oh. Because I'm trying, because I forgot the fact that... I tried that before and I was having problems with it. Coming through Discord. Like I think for a while when there was that period where I'd be talking and then my voice would just cut out in the middle of the Song of Rapture games, I was using the virtual thingy. Hello? There he is. You hear there. You're still just real quiet. Oh, and there's the echo. Yeah, and echo on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's both transmitting and recording. Okay, what about now? Yeah? No echo? You know, can you hear me? Okay, so I then... Yeah, so the problem is... Uh... Da -da 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 -da. That's the aux bio. Uh, let me turn that, I guess, okay, back I up. Now. All right, can you hear me now clearly? Well, I have it set to push to talk. Um, yeah, because it's sending this to A1. A1 is this. I hear Which you, is... uh, in Discord, clearly, uh, your voice is a little softer in the stream. And my voice is coming through, and, like, I'm in the background. Okay, yeah. my like, Discord is soft? No, like, stream. But I'm saying you sound soft on stream. Yeah. Right now it was really, really soft in stream. So if you're turning down trouble, that's going to be hard for us higher pitched talkers. No, I'm not turning down trouble. Okay. Okay, something... what's going on here? Hold on. Alright, so, someone say something? Oh my god. What? Why is it not going? What the fuck happened? Everything broken. Speaker's <laughs> microphone didn't come through stream at all. Good. Probably wasn't the best. It is. And neither did Omen. Oh, it's you mean like at the last minute? There we go. Capitals, pigs, I sense in you, and I'll make a sign and I'll protest to the capitalist pigs in the there's White the House for us. Oh god, there's the echo. <laughs> My voice, Monka S. I thought the echo was a tree, but it's not. This is clearly the doing of the capitalist orange man. Man, it's that virtual audio mixer. That was a fun. So no, his capitalist four. orange man. We must protest him. Yeah. Might need to reset the, the settings on that thing. 
because it sounds like it's doing default and default tries to record and send both things you're hearing and sending yourself. We can hear ourselves in the stream now, at least. Weird. At normal volumes. At quiet ASMR volumes. Can you hear the music? You are real quiet. Can you hear the music? <laughs> yes. All right. All right. And now there's no music. Oh my gosh. Oh man, so like, I heard that from you and then from stream, so it was... It's madness? Together. Yeah. Not madness, it was kind of cool, actually. Oh yeah. I don't. Your microphone is still not coming through, though. But yeah, I can hear. We can hear through Discord. Hear me on mm -hmm. stream. There you go. You can mm -hmm. hear me on Discord, but you can, or on stream, but you can't hear. Now me I can't hear. Shit. You started to come through on stream uh, as you finish your sentence. Okay. So then, what I need to do is Let me check one thing. Just music. Nope. Oh, nope, there I am. Oh, there we go. Brendan's got it. They're taking the harvest to Ireland. Ireland? Yes. I can't hear you on Discord. Yes. 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 You're still not on stream, though. Okay. Then I do stream input. Now I should be talking in both directions, where you can hear me on stream and you guys can hear me in Discord. But if Melanie says anything, then she also gets picked up. Melanie should say something. You are a little quiet on uh, streamer. <laughs> okay, how about now? Much better. Yeah, I'm like 12 decibels louder now. Enjoy. Yeah. Now you're just real loud on Discord, though. What do you have me set to on volume in Discord? Uh, I'll bring it down. Like, I'll bring it down to three decibels. I, I had you at like 130, so I can just had you to 100. Yeah, so this should hopefully work, I think. God, I'm listening to both channels, and my mind is splitting in half. Both you gotta, you gotta do what I do, Omen. You gotta like deafen yourself. Just put like a nail in my ear. No, no, on the Discord, Omen. <laughs> Just clap your hands on your ears real quick. Wait, a couple yeah, times. now I hear the echo in the stream. <laughs> you were talking about just cup your hands and then just press them against both of your ears at the same time just put a finger in each ear and press it inward until they meet in the middle see that's i know mel's listening to the stream because it took like five seconds <laughs> get help. i have find, the help. find a nice pin laying nearby and just you know go for it <laughs> Just find a nice shutter pen and then just stick it in your eye, just very carefully. You hear that stream? Is the two lessons to learn from this episode is uh, put pens in your ears and steal everything. Also, protest your government.
I'm gonna see how long it goes. Okay, mm -hmm. so can you hear me without hearing? Do you hear the music or no? I don't I hear no music. music. Okay, but and I if do, I hear do you. this, do you hear the music? Ooh, I hear that music. Okay, cool. So now, but now that's going through Discord, but you shouldn't hear it on the stream, right, Mel? No? No, I do hear music on stream. I heard music. And I heard your voice over the music as well. Oh, so you do you hear music on stream? Yeah, I hear music. The good ass song. How do you hear music on stream? It's not going anywhere. I don't know. There was music, now there's not. It's only going through when you start talking, too. Okay, so yeah, okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's how that's supposed to work. Okay, so then I can hear the music right now, and it should not be going on stream, right? Correct. All right, so you guys are going to stream, which is B2, which is fine, That's the so that's the only audio going to the stream. So then if I do that, the stream should have the music, but not when I'm talking. Uh, it was going when you were talking. Uh, music's still going. Yeah, I was just talking at the same time, that's all. Uh, okay, so B1 <clears throat> is just my voice. So then, boom. Uh, you guys' audio is B2. Music is B2. Music's also going to A1. And... You guys are going to A1. Alright, so we should be good. We should be clear. We should be good. <gasps> Sorry. I think we're good, right. yeah. Ooh. And that's the session. Uh, thanks everybody for sharing. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, this has been Song of Rapture. Right, uh, honestly, like, a lot for, of this uh, stuff is hard to test by myself, so I'm sorry for having right. y'all go through all of this. It's alright. I'm trying to make sure everything is... Look forward to Wednesday when we talk about uh, a very special, extra special thing. Mmm, we'll get to that. But first... Okay, we're gonna go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on the starting line. Okay. All right. So hi, everybody. This is Omen. Your episode of Song of Rapture has been put on hold. The Valiant Seven had found themselves trapped in a dungeon, a tomb of Milahanes, where strange things are starting to pop up. And, uh, well, it seems like they're going to be in a pretty, uh, pretty pickle in their next episode. However, we're missing two people, one person gone visiting family the other is with family and here in spirit but not in body and so i decided instead of casting the episode or simply just canceling it today we'll uh, start one of what i assume to be many sort of non-canon episodes i like i like this idea of having sort of this sort of series of uh non you know, obviously non-canon not part of the actual story people can die come back to life whatever doesn't matter but like sort of its own like besides just like a weird mini offshoot episode like a series of them something connecting them and this one's going to be very fun it's going to be your introduction into it into something called the blood bowl tonight we have it looks like only about four people we have luna we have samantha we have gregory and persephone not going to be your typical start to your uh, your normal Song of Rapture episode, but uh, nonetheless, it's still Song of Rapture, although possibly maybe a little sillier than normal. Might find some strange things just to test stuff out. Nothing here is canon, just reminding you. All right, one this second. This is how Samantha talks now. Episode. I talk yeah. like this. Hi, my name is Samantha. Oh, yeah. It's a pleasure to meet Trying you. Trying out accent. Wee! Jesus Christ. Mm. Okay. Such a silly snake. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> silly snake. Oh, such a silly snake. So unlike a usual episode in which I do the great DM trick of someone else give me a, uh, a, a recap of what happened last time, in these episodes, your old friend Omen will give you a recap of what's been going on in this strange parallel universe. So to begin it off, four people, while two of them have been away, possibly the doctor at work, and Clyde and Mitty off hunting, possibly searching for goblins with their ears still bound by gold and silver 
Clyde is eager to find some sort of coinage from them by hunting down these creatures. Paracelsus, on the other hand, is busy brewing potions with Locasta in her workshop. All of you have been in sort of a, a state of constant work, simple chore work with Jody, trying to fix what's been broken in the fallen horse. One of you, just walking through town, happened to notice a flyer sitting on the wall of the Watchman's Post. It seemed kind of, uh, kind of strange. There really wasn't much listed on it other than a few words. One was, hold on, oh, sorry. One was blood, the other bowl, and below it, a large number. 1,000 gold pieces. No information, no other details. The only thing marking this poster was a very strange symbol. Mark of three mountains. That, which some of you would know to be the city of Broken Ridge. And one of you who ever found this, possibly Gregory or Samantha, maybe Luna or Persephone, somebody found this poster, came ripping it off the wall, brought it back and uh, threw it down at the table. Jody immediately eyed it, see the large number and almost pushed you guys out the door. They go participate, whatever the hell the Blood Bowl is. You guys have traveled for about two weeks up north, up to Broken Ridge, gotten past the gates, spent a little time exploring the city, and eventually found yourselves in the heart of the largest city, known as... Where are you called? I had you. I had you. Risan of the three mountain ranges in the teeth, the lar- one of the largest in the middle, where it seems like a lot of, popula- a lot of uh, popular folk and uh, people from far off seem to come to this mountain range of Broken Ridge, this very popular part of the city. Um, and yeah, you find yourself standing outside of what looks to be something of a coliseum. And after showing someone the flyer, a guard, I, I, I suppose, he would look it over, Give it a blink or two, look over the group, count your heads, and lead you on inside. You guys spend some time waiting in something of like a, I guess an admission room. Nothing really much to speak of. It's not very cozy, not very pretty to look at. Stone walls, wooden benches, lots of racks for weapons and armor, although most of them seem to be taken as if other participants in this whatever events going on have already taken their tools leaving a little to none for you maybe someone picks up a shield or a, a nice helmet but basically you guys are left with what's ever on your backs and whatever is on your hilts you guys wait for about an hour or two you hear the sort of occasional like roar of the crowd sort of this rumbling thunder sound maybe mechanical devices moving the sound of like something being cranked and large stone wheels turning and after a while things fall silent and then a guard comes for you he stands next to the door this large stone archway guarded, or rather stopped by a large wooden gate that seems to open up. He plants his spear in the ground, takes a step to the side, and ushers you all into the middle. And then it becomes very obvious at this point, if it's not already. This is an arena! And as the gates open, the guard leads you to the center. It seems like there's a spot in this open, oval-shaped arena. Spatters of blood mark the earth, stain the dirt, especially around the edges, where it seems to almost be pooling, possibly giving the name of this uh, this arena its uh, namesake. And at its center, you find two large, or four rather, large pillars, those that reach about 30 feet high, almost as high as the walls of this arena. Seems like if you guys need to get out, well, you're going to have to either have a really high jump or some pythons because these walls do not look easy to climb. You are ushered towards the center to stand between these four pillars. And slowly but surely, the gate shuts behind you. As you find yourself standing in this strange looking arena. Rude, Jordan. Rude. 
So mean. Such a mean I paid baby. Good Patreon money for this arena. I found it. Fair and square, Jordan. Oh my god. <laughs> now I have to go get another arena. <laughs> And you look at looking around, you'll see these stones. They look like seats, though. They can't be too comfortable because there's probably no more than a dozen, a dozen and a half people sitting and watching. Doesn't seem like this blood bowl is very popular. Despite the sounds of the roaring you heard, it should have been a large crowd. Although now it just seems like there's only a handful of people. They don't seem to be watching too enthused. Some of them just seem to be commoners. They hold like maybe a, a, a small sack of what look to be like nuts or other small crunchy treats, though they seem to, more, seem to be more focused on one another locked in conversation than they actually do on the people who just walked in. And at the northern side of this arena, you see a brazier that seems to be gently smoking as if just put out. The bronze. The what? The bronze. It's silver, actually. Little leaves. <laughs> and after a few moments, the crowd sort of starts stops talking as there's this crackling sound. The embers in the brazier begin to roil. You see these little sparks of light begin to sort of crawl almost, like slithering like snakes across these hot embers, before finally goof, a bright flame takes over and rises from the brazier. This bright white fire that sort of begins to undulate, almost like a rainbow, taking all these different, like, uh, resplendent colors. And strangely enough, as they begin to roil and spin, almost like stripes running along the side, the colors begin to organize themselves, and the fire begins to change shape. It takes the shape of a small man. The colors sort of lining up where the face would be, where the hair, where the body, where the clothing, until you're, you're left with the image of a man? A small man. Although it seems like his proportions have been blown up by this fire. It looks like a halfling. As a somewhat familiar face appears in the fire. Hello there, and welcome to the Blood Bowl! I'm your host, Magnus McDonald. You may have heard of me. I've been running odds end in, 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 over here in Broken Ridge. Business has been terrible, so I'm diversifying my portfolio into death readers. The benefits are terrible. Oh, should have said that. Boss is giving me a strange look. Who do we have here today? He pulls out, it looks like in the fire, he pulls out this mass of flame that takes a shape. It looks to be like a ledger or like a scroll. Who are these? Ooh, the Valiant Seven, but I see four. Well, hopefully they'll live up to their name in strength rather than in number. Without any further ado, let the experience begin. As the fire woof, vanishes, and you guys see... Armor of Agathus, as you're preparing yourself. The walls to your left and right open up. These gates... Lift upwards, and you see four large figures stepping into fray. Their bodies are about this, almost the size of horses, although their legs are shorter. They are covered in fur, that which seems to be most prominent around their heads. Cascading and large manes. Ah, oh, hail. As four lions enter the arena. And I need y'all to roll some initiative. I'm not legally allowed to kill lions. Oh, it's going to be a trouble in this <laughs> arena. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I fly up to the audience and uh, watch. Samantha, <laughs> what are you doing? As Gregory's bladders take over and he just releases himself in the middle of the arena. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good luck, Persephone and Luna. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I can turn into them and I can just convince them not to eat us. Huh. Cast fly and fly over the walls. <laughs> Wait, I can't turn into anything that flies yet! <laughs> <laughs> 
I already need one more initiative. Samantha. Ha <laughs> ha. Alrighty. And it seems like with the sound of these gates cranking open and sort of catching the sight of these creatures, especially with dark vision and good perception, you can sort of make out what they are. You can ready yourselves as these gates are opening. And you, all of you basically get the jump on these creatures as they start to approach. Persephone, what do you want to do? get some backup as I pull out a giant list of animals. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna... How far are you? Poor slow boys. <laughs> right. right, just summon four more lions. Exactly. Let's see. What challenge rating are they? Uh, mm mm Lion should be CR2. The CR1. Oh. Uh, there you go. Mm hmm. Well, then, dire sure. wolves are CR2. Yeah. Yeah. Summon, summon two lions. Dire wolves are also CR1. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. 200x. No, it's more than that. Yeah, they should be more yeah they're more. one. They're one. I know they're one. Okay. Let's see. Do do do. Base spirits. Do do that form. Creature friendly. Okay, so here's the way the Conjure Animal works. You can choose one of these challenge ratings. Yes. But what beast forms they take, oh, you might, eh, it will depend. What I ask for Conjure Animals is you're calling out to the spirits to take form of beasts and help you in some situation. What aid are you calling them for? What do you want them to help you with? I want them to help us fight through the arena. All right. And protect us. Let's see. Do -do -do. Nope, not here. Hold on a second. One second. Do -do 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 -do. turtles. Here come the turtles. All right. Seeing these large maned creatures appearing before you, you realize though they don't outnumber you, they are larger, they have more claws and more teeth. And possibly more muscle, sans Gregory. On Sage. Can you choose the area? No, alright. Down to 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 down is there any spaces you're actively choosing? Because I think you can actually choose those. Do you want to summon them in a certain place? Yeah, I want one to go here. Okay. And one to go here. All right. Okay. As you're seeing these creatures, you call upon the power of the spirits. And you can see for a moment, not just see, but feel, Samantha, Luna, and you, Persephone, the similar feeling you had when... When old Mitty just seemed to come out of nowhere in that fight against the Owlbears, you feel that similar feeling of something giving way, a threshold being broken. And for a moment, you see these sort of spectral swirls of light appearing in these spaces. Before, one sec. Oh, God. Don't break on me. No. All right. Eh. Eh. Two more lines appear. What do you want to do? Anything else you want to do? There's more of them. Don't worry, these ones are going to be our friends. I'm going to point to this one. You, I want you to attack that one over there, closest to you. Same thing for you, and I'm just pointing, giving them directions. All right, these lions whose fur seems to be in constant motion. Despite there not being much of a breeze, their manes just seem to be constantly flowing in this windless environment they just they don't he they don't turn to look at you but there's sort of this shiver like a breeze ring along their body as you give them each an order and their body tenses up i gotta give them initiatives hey, hey. Cool. yeah hey. as a group okay let me start you real quick hey. all right They'll go right after you. I'll say they go right after you, then why not? Because you both have about the same. Is that all you do on your turn? Yeah. 
All right, you summon these lions and immediately they go running towards these creatures. Although they seem to be a little bit of a short distance, they don't take too long to get to them. This lion runs over to the other and takes uh, a big, he tries to swipe his claw at him. Voila. Ooh. Ooh. Seems to catch this other lion by surprise as his claws just tear into its face, dealing a meaty 10 damage. <laughs> as the other one does the same, running forward and taking a big old slash. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, and though not quite as keen with its strike, it does manage to catch its flesh and tear, dealing nine damage. I'm gonna name them Slashy and Scratchy. Alright. Oh, You're planning on keeping them. Am I? As the lions settle in their space, Luna, I like you're on deck. Green dot on the friendly lions. Sure. Since they have obvious magical properties that I green. can apply them to our eyes. I'm green. Yeah, their hair, if you're looking at them, like, visually, their hair just seems to be in constant motion and this you know, strange wind that blows through them, so visually, this is an easy way to distinct. I'm getting, like, Pokemon Coliseum flashbacks where we're just, like, standing and just, like, wavy. Oh, yeah, there was a constant breeze in Pokemon Coliseum, I remember that. Yeah! Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, Ryan's got this. I guess I'll just take a nap. <laughs> it's like a Pokemon battle. Can we just all summon animals? <laughs> what have I done? I need another level. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. I will do that. I'm sorry. Can you can call my animal fake. Hmm? No, some, some of Gregory's animal. Gregory's animal's fake. Your animal is real. Yeah, I'll just pass that guy. All right. Give me the other splash shot. I don't have a verge. Right. Ooh, Ooh. But both of those will definitely hit as veering around this lion's body, you're able to just blast. Strike clean into this creature, almost catching it blindsided behind this other large beast. Ooh, how do you want to kill it? Thanks for the follow. Pop its eyes. <laughs> After getting its face slashed open, these two stones that are embedded with this Eldritch energy sweep around its body and just blast right into its eyeballs. The lion lets out a shriek and just falls to the ground, limp and dead. So tricksy. Uh, Alright, Samantha. Um, Up taking up the initiative uh, with what Luna's doing, uh, I will also do, 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 do. Uh, I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast as well, targeting the lion uh, right here. Okay, give me some shots, baby. Neat. I'm opening up Oops. Destiny. Uh, trying to follow after <laughs> Luna, your, your, your spectral <laughs> snakes come flying around this thing. And as they come flying to the up. lion, have it, having seen its ally fall, its pack mate drop to the ground dead, this thing is a bit more defensive and manages to pull itself to the side, avoiding both strikes. Cry every time. Uh, and... I'll hold on to my other spell slide, so that's it for me. Okie dokie. Gregory Timberson. Well, we got the chance for it. Everybody, believe in the gods. They'll guide your hands. I pray to you. As I hold on to small necklace. That's the holy light pours out of me, and I'm going to bless... Everybody but Persephone, because I can only bless three people. Get some bliss on you. Luna, Gregory, and Samantha. You say your prayer and and still some sort of, whether it's divine strength or maybe just the inspiration behind your words. Get a bonus to their attack roll, saving throws, and that's it. Yeah. 
as well. Just heave up my maul and start taking a step towards it's like the group with the more healthy lines. The one's already been slain. Just all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is that'll be my turn. Alrighty, lion's turn. The wounded lion carved across its face pulls itself up, sort of slinking around this creature's body as the other comes around it. They both seem to stand and try to catch this thing in sort of a blind spot. This strange creature that looks like a lion, acts like a lion, smells like a lion, but clearly is something else. As they're going to go and try and pincer this guy. One goes for... Uh, ooh. One's going to go for a bite, although it seems like they're very almost perfect placement around this creature. This one starting to slink around this side and turning around here. Yeah. Gives it a bit of advantage as they're acting as a pact. As one bites. Ooh. Dealing damage as it gets past its speedy, agile defenses and it sinks its teeth into its hide. Dealing eight damage. Do do do. Do. The other one coming up from behind and catching it with a claw. Grr. Ooh, seems like returning the crit as it's, this thing's being bitten, its defense is left open, and it comes up and carves it right underneath its arm, getting deep into its flesh and possibly through the bone, dealing six damage. As the lion seems to be in rough shape, the other, now alone, comes around here. Ooh, he sees his ally down. He sees large prey in front of it, having struck it down so quickly, sees weaker prey behind. <laughs> and he's gonna let's see how wise are you wow, wow oh boy he's gonna go for the weak one as he's going to start making a beeline in this direction as he runs by this creature is gonna try and take a swipe out at him trying to claw him down come on Ooh, <laughs> another <laughs> his lions are tough <laughs> it seems like the lion you summon catches this one in its state of panic, dealing, ooh, Yeesh. a medium amount of damage, almost taking off some of its arm, part of one of its shoulders with it. So the lion continues to run. As he gets here, he as he gets about here, you see this thing, Persephone, put its paws on the ground, and oof, leap. Birds, watch out! Let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, there, there. There All right. As he seems like he's going to be trying to pull his entire weight on top of you. As he's going to make an attack. Ah! And get, get, get. Here comes the new oh. Ooh. Damn, Luna. No, that does not. I have a really strong turtle shield now. Yeah, as this wow. large creature shadowing your body with its massive form, claws bearing down. A combination of your toughened armor and this large turtle shield rise up, and despite not having the strength to really catch it, it manages to poof, bowl itself into you, its claws scraping against the armor and catching nothing as it instead lands in front of you. But that's all it does. Lion turn! What is their order? It's gonna be the one on the left first and one on the right second. Do the what? Oh, were you like asking like what are their orders? Like what's yes. the ah! you can basically give them, yeah, you can give them orders, whatever you want them to do. Okay. So I want Slashy to try to mm. How do both of the other two lions look? Um, the one above, hold on a second. Do -do -do. Oh, that's probably why. Hold on. No health bars. That's why. Eh. Eh. Thought I got that out there. I guess I didn't. One second. Yeah, the, the top line looks like he took a pretty a pretty weathered blow across its face from that critical strike. The one below has not been struck yet, but he's now finding himself in a very good position to rip and tear. And the one standing right in front of you is looking a little rough. I'll get these guys health barred up real quick. And you, the one that is, is your that you summoned, is also sort of in a sorry state as it's being flanked on both sides. Okay, this one I want slashy. I want you to try to get out of there. This direction. Okay. And Scratchy, I want you to come over here and get this line away from us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All righty. It's right here. Please. I don't want here. this being here anymore. 
too close. He's not All food. Right. He's food. Hearing your orders, the lion now surrounded positions itself in a way that it can quickly find its feet and then spring away, disengaging from this sort of poor placement position being surrounded, making about as far as I can go away from it. Is that your order? Or is it going to a specific position? Uh, just telling it to get away, but towards like north east-ish. Okay, so it, uses, it disengages. These creatures almost reach up to catch it with its claws, one rearing its teeth back to bite, but then this thing's just too quick and agile, and it seems like it still has movement to go. But it stops, and it waits. The other one, realizing its prey got away, even after landing that de had devastating blow, turns, runs, leaps in the air... As we get a dog pile going on. Yes! Let's see. Uh, size? No, all right. As this lion tries to pounce on the other. Let's see. Pick him up. And oh. as it comes down, the other lion looks back and pulls itself out of the way, but the claws come back and catch it on the haunch. As it's just enough to hit. Dealing nine damage? Oof. Bring it down to a sorry state, and let's see. You need a strength save. As you need a strength save. Eh. You don't. Know. As he goes down, pulled to the ground by your spectral lion. Nice. I'm so proud of him. And he is prone. I'm gonna put him like that there. And that's all he does. Persephone. Put a thorn whip him while he's down. <laughs> That'll hit. <laughs> yeah. All right, give me that damage. <gasps> I get to brutal. I get to him while he's on the ground to death. I get to ask you the important question: How do you want to kill him with Thorn Whip? I wanted to wrap around him first, looking just like regular roots, and uh -huh. then sharp, rough crystal thorns, like not thorns, but like spikes. You mm -hmm. hurt instantly. Oh, nice. Yeah. As you take this thing and wrap it around it and tear and pull, and this creature, you just see a pool of blood just come out immediately after it. It's not a slow spill, it's just spraying almost out of it as it just goes limp. And the lion pulls itself off of its prey. Damn, purse. Gonna, I'm just gonna go over here. Okie dokie. Is that your turn? Yeah, it's my turn. Alrighty, slaying this creature. Luna, you're on deck. You see one creature fall land, almost trying to grab Persephone, another one land on top of it, and then Persephone just eviscerates it. But it seems like there's still a couple lines left in the fray. I'm gonna peek around this rock and. To that guy without your class. All right. Using your spell sniping abilities, you can peek just around the slightest crack and catch it, and both of those will hit. Oof. Let's see, that's 11. As both of these shots come colliding into its body, similar to the last one, although your aim isn't quite as precise to blast it straight through the eyes. You instead catch it around the head and deep into one side of its mane. As you can see, the energy actually scorches some of its hair away and bury itself into its flesh. It almost falls backwards against the wall, but it manages to catch its claws on the earth, almost using them as anchors to keep itself standing. Barely alive, but still very much ready to fight. Yeah, that's it. All right, Samantha. <clears throat> uh, seeing this lion get torn up by crystals, uh, she'll just use her uh, da -da -da, bonus action and conjure forth her great big black snake uh, that seems to come mm. from her cloak and jump uh, out from her over towards uh, this guy. All right. Just latches on to his neck. And starts to... Let the terrible joke just die. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. As you should. Uh, I'm fucking up his uh, strength, I guess. All right, as you're casting your hex, I'm just going to assume. Yes. This thing turns to look at you as a snake wraps around its body, snaps down with its jaws, and it seems like this sense of malaise goes over its expression for just a moment as it has to use a bit more focus to stay standing as it loses a bit of its uh, natural strength to its abilities. And then just raising up her scepter once again, uh, calling forth on the magic of her Eldritch Blast. You can see her scepter glow green, and then along the length of the great black snake wrapped around it, it also glows green with a streak of energy uh, coursing up to the fangs as it tries to <laughs> pinch back into it again with two bright green fangs uh, for Eldritch Blast. All right. Two me Eldritch Blasts. Ooh, that'll do it. And that'll do it. Give me them damages. Oof. <laughs> Let's see. 11 plus 20. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see. 11. 16. As you catch into this creature's body, these two fangs bury into it. The body just almost goes limp, falling to the ground for just a moment before pulling itself back up. And it seems like this thing has just had all the strength drained out of it, tearing through its form. You see blood just pooling from the wound, as it seems alive, although barely. <sighs> all right, I'll clean up my light work, Gregory. I'm on it. All righty, Gregory Timberson, hammer in hand. I got this two weak lines in front of me. Well, it's worth a shot, so I'm just gonna uh, start charging forward as I haul off a javelin off my back, aiming it up with the creature behind the other, and letting it loose. Chucking a javelin across the battlefield. Chucking your javelin. Give me that shot, baby. 13 plus 1 will definitely hit him. Oh. <laughs> and that's more than enough. How do you want to kill him? Just chunk right in the side of the neck. It's looking over to try to follow the other line that's running away. Just hit it right in the neck. Try to <laughs> knock it back as I'm taking up my momentum, realizing I'm getting a little bit too close to this thing, not get my ball back in my hands. I just take the hand that threw the javelin and just crunch it into this thing's face. Just punch it in the Punching nose. It. All right, give me punch. Let's see. Ooh, that'll definitely hit it, and I think, yep, yep, you can't not kill it. How do you want to kill it this time? <laughs> just crunch it across the nose. It looks like it's already basically dead as it is as I just send it to the ground. Yep, and it's sorry state, surrounded by this serpent that just saps its strength. You just swing its fist and crash into its face. You can hear the bones just give way as if this thing were draining the strength from its very foundation, its very constitution, and it just crumples to the ground backwards, standing on its hind legs a bit and then just falling. I'll just start backing up to the group a little bit. Oh. All right. Uh... <laughs> you, you can't comment about the way that I took care of the lion when you're just smashing lions in their faces. Well, that's what I do! What do you want I'm me to, to do? i great! <laughs> You're a terrible person, Persephone. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. And it seems like with that last strike, the four lions you were facing have been slain. And you can hear the flame royal once again in the brazier, this time a bit quicker as the fire takes form into that familiar face of everyone's favorite little halfling. I thorn whip the brazier. <laughs> As this thing comes into form, your thorn whip swings out, catches into the fire, although it seems like there's no image or object there other than the flame. As once again, Magnus the McDonald appears. Wow, that was amazing! Did you see the way they killed those animals? They lasted longer than most people did. Hope they can last past round two. Although, if I gave you a warning, I wouldn't look to the gates. And he sort of points up at the sky before the fire <laughs> once again vanishes. Slowly look up. I'm feeling that ain't the end of it. Yep. Now you guys look up at the sky, you, you see. It looks like there's something 
just above you, something sort of roiling and wavering until it begins to disperse, as if... Was that always there? And these forms that fall off look almost like flags falling, sort of wavering, until the wind finally catches them and you see wings far spread, large, pretty large, actually. And as they descend down, let's see, they probably fall about about 30 feet or so. They eventually swoop down over this arena as it seems like they're each sort of taking aim at one of you. One do 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 do. And my, my hex flavor is fine, right? Where like after the creature dies, the, the snake attaches itself and it comes back to me. Sure, yeah. That's your way of controlling it and sending it to other people. That's all cool. As you see these large birds, larger than you've probably ever seen. Some of them seem to be large enough. Their bodies could be the size of horses. Their wings three times as long around their necks, similar to these creatures that you fought before, these lions. But the mane does not go up their head. It goes around their throats and plumes down. As you see, four large, looks like vultures. Each one of these things. <laughs> As I gotta put a thing on each one of these. Well, definitely, uh, I'll just be quick about killing them so we can get our gold and get out of this awful place. And. and uh, uh, oh, alright. And it seems like in their speedy descent. They get the advantage. They get the drop on you quite literally. Let's see who goes for Sini Mini Mighty Mo. The one out in the open. Oof. The one seemingly to the northwest drops down rather quickly, almost descending in a perfect swoop down, trying to rake its claws. Ooh. Starting with actually, it's yeah, it's claws coming down on top of a Mr. Timberson. Hell. Let's see, as he's gonna try and... Oh, uh, claw ya! Bam. Nope. Bending this thing off. No! And as you're pushing away these claws, the large head with a long neck seems to swoop over and try to get a peck. <laughs> but you are just too defensive. Your hammer raised, your armor strong. It will not land. Oh, for me. The next seeming to droop down. Its claws extended, falling down towards you, Samantha. Although this time, you see its claws, rather than reaching out to rake against your body, they seem to be opening up invitingly as it's going to try. It looks like it's trying to, to grab you. As it's going to give a, so let's see, you got a strength check. So I'm going to need either an athletics or an acrobatics check, because this thing is trying to catch you. But you are too quick. These claws snapping through the air. And how do you defend yourself? out of the way. You slither out of the way. Perfect. Let's Walk, see. put like an S pattern away from it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming down here. Ooh. This creature. Do, 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 do. How far can you make it? Yeah, perfect. This creature seeming to catch at a good angle with the way the light is moving and the shadows are formed in this arena. Swoops up and over and over, coming down. Once again, similar to how it, it, it seemed to accost Samantha. Coming down right over your head, Luna. And it's going to try and literally grab you. Give me an athletics or a dexterity check. Athletics or acrobatic check, rather. Oof. As, you try, as, as quickly as you try to avoid it, this creature's claws manage to catch just the side of your garb. And it seems to grab you with its talons, although it seems like just dropping down at such high speed was all it could do to reach you as you are grappled by it. Hey, and, this last one. and the last one. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Coming down towards the other small creature and going for another grab. Ta-da! Give me an athletics or acrobatics check. Ooh, ah. just enough. The claws actually catch onto your body, but you manage to push it away with no. your shield and throw it off. And it doesn't manage to catch you. 
Okay, good. And that's their turn. Lions! Oh shit, they're still around. Yeah! <laughs> I, I still have lions! <laughs> Alright, I want Slashy to get that one off of Gregory. And since Scratchy is right here with Luna, I want him to attack this one. All right. Let's see. Scratchy goes over here. Ooh, interesting. All right. It seems like placing this large line on the other side of this creature has granted it a very good position in attacking. As it's within five feet of a creature of... If it's five within five feet of an ally, it's going to try and get some pack tactics off. Let's see. Gonna go scratchy. Oof. Ooh. <laughs> MVP. <laughs> Jesus. As they carve in this creature, dealing a considerable amount of damage. Move to the front real quick. Deal in. Ba Boom. Tearing into this thing's wing, although it manages to only catch the underside of the meat. Enough to sort of hamper its flight, but it still managed to pull itself off the ground and sort of remain in this sort of hovering position. And the other one down here, also right next to Luna. Getting that sweet, sweet pack tactics. Can try and bite or slash. Let's do a bite. Bite, bite, bite. With advantage. Oop, that'll still definitely connect. These creatures are large, and while they seem to be quite light and quick, their bodies, their size, makes it challenging for them to move out of the waves of attacks. As it takes seven damage. Teeth tearing into its flesh. For 70. Yeah, let's. If I try to move it to get like a opportunity attack, because I'm so close. It, yeah, if you, since you're within five feet of it, and you try to move away without disengaging, it will have a chance to peck or scratch at you. Did my lion get a chance to knock the dude down? Ah, huh? uh, did he move twenty feet? I think he moved from like up here-ish. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. far. Unless he jumped really high in the sky and fell on top of him. <laughs> Just body slamming him. Good enough, line buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna disengage. And... Okay. Get the all this away. Alrighty, you, you raise your shield and sort of keep your, your defense up against this creature as it tries to look for an opening but can find none, and you pull yourself away. And that'll be my turn. All right, Luna. You're surrounded on both sides by large vultures. Okay, bye, Persephone. <laughs> I left you with Scratchy. So it's just, just like gripped up in the claws. <laughs> uh, I will summon a Shadow Blade at level three and then stab this person. Ooh. All right. As you, as these claws are holding on to you, catching on the side of your clothing, you summon forth this blade of shadow. Oof. Although it seems like in this precarious position, these wings flapping around your head, feathers flying everywhere. You take a swipe out, and you think you catch something tearing through the feathers, but you realize it was just a, it was a, it was just a, buff, a buffet, rather, of its plume. And you miss. Please, Persephone. Well, that's it. I can't wait. All right. Samantha. Uh, so first, uh, the large black snake that's coiled around me in my hex, uh, you know, turns his attention towards the vulture that's trying to accost me, trying to pick me up, and just leaps off of me onto it as a bonus action. Um, mm hmm wrapping itself around it and trying to find a, a good spot to drain its uh, strength away from it. Okay. Does that hurt? That hurts his uh, grapples, right? Ability check, so yeah. Okay. Seems like as the snake wraps around it, again, similar to the lion, this sort of sense of malaise runs over it. Its wings sort of catch for a second before it compensates. Although you see like these clashing claws seem to uh, open and close a bit slower, a bit weaker as it loses some of its strength. <laughs> as you pull yourself away, it's going to try and get a slash out at you. 
It tries to catch him with its talons. Ooh, that'll hit. Yeah, the claws tear into you, going through your sc scale armor? Uh, I currently have... Uh, if you said you cast it, scale armor for me though. Oh, no, I, I mean, have, uh, I mean, armor magnets, yes. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> Your scaly armor. All right, as he cuts into you, do you, do you have do you do so you do have it up? Yeah. All right, so then he takes a big meaty fifteen damage, right? I'm assuming five for every level. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, he's got third level spells now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. As the claws tear into you. Ripping through your armor, both of scales and of leather, carving into your body, dealing nine damage, but those scales, how do they damage it again? Uh, how much damage did I take? Nine? Yeah, so, nine. Just, and just in this case, uh, since it's so little damage, it scratches up and rips some of the scales off that seem to just float into the air for a moment before all the scales just fly into them in a series. Cat. Yeah, catching him like a spray of, of just of just shrapnel tearing into its body. The creature almost falls from the air before it almost pushes itself off the ground with its wings in a very sorry state. <clears throat> Bleeding from all of these small puncture wounds on its body. Just Cold puncture wounds, rather. So Alright. Eldritch Blast. Uh... Uh, he has my hex on him, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll just do both of them. All right. Blast him. That first one will definitely hit. Uh, the, one, the second one won't, but let's see the damage. Let's see. All right, how do you want to kill him? <laughs> yeah, he's like recoiling from all the uh, the ice scales ripping into him, and as he's like, ah! looks it back over to me, it just goes right down his throat, and it just gone. You can see the bulge of magic running down its long reptil, almost reptilian throat before it surges in its chest, and just well, it seems like I don't. Of... Yeah. Well, it would, but there's a bunch of holes in his body from scales, so it just shoots <laughs> out like a strainer, and it falls to the ground dead. As the black snake just leaps from it and coils back up around, and its head just sits next to mine, looking for the next target. Alrighty. Probably Gregory. Gregory Timberson! This thing's scratching down at me. I'm trying to fend it off, but thankfully, the lion tearing into its back, recoil a bit, I see a chance, and I just fucking try to baseball bat this thing into its chest. All the might I can muster. I'm just gonna try to beat into it. I'm a great weapon master attack. All right, give me that attack. Oh, it seems like in your recklessness, just trying to swing this thing with all of your might. The ground beneath you is a bit soft, and as you spin, you don't get that uh, that hard, firm stance, and your feet sort of spin beneath you, and you sort of just twirl for a second. The bird sort of pulls itself out of your range just enough to avoid the hammer, and it misses. Hell, get hell away from me! As I'm just going to start running towards Luna anyways. All right, you move away. It's going to try and catch you with his claws, although it seems like you're moving too fast and too much weight to grab, so he's just going to slash you. Although, just glances off your scale armor. Yeah. So I'm just going to try to get up in between these things and Luna. All righty. Let's see who's alive. Oof. <laughs> this creature realizing the, to, the, to the northwest, realizing its precarious position now that its prey is moving away, and there's a large beast too close for comfort next to it. It's going to fly a little higher in the air, only going about, uh, about 10 feet. Enough for this creature can get an opportunity attack as the lion, will the lion take a swipe? All right. Lion reached up with his claw. Not with advantage this time because his ally's gone. Oof. But enough to catch it. Tearing on its underside and dealing considerable amount of damage. But with blood dripping and feathers falling from this creature, it flies up and over you, Gregory. And as you hear these wings beating around you, many heads start to turn. As this creature's going to try and take a swipe out at you. Although it seems like now that it's within close proximity to one of its allies, his wings beating around you, 
He's going to get advantage. First come the claws. Ooh. A hail. Then comes the beak. Second one misses. All right. And you manage to hold on to your spell. And unfortunately, the scent of blood catches the attention of the other that just lost its other prey as it icks down at you. And that's not right. There we go. Here comes it's called talons, and here comes a beak. <laughs> Start fitting them off from all directions. Hold <laughs> on, Luna. No! As it As... scratches against my body, and I feel the <laughs> of my mm-hmm. armor. Yes, you do, as the armor manages to catch this very deadly beak that would just tear straight into your soft spot and lower the damage as you take only seven damage. So good to go. All right. Thanks. But, but the vulture holding on to Luna begins to go up, 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 up as it begins to pull it begins to pull it as high as it could possibly go. And as it pulls it out of your range, both you, Gregory, and Mr. Lion Bitey, that's his name, can get opportunity attacks, if you wish. Yeah, no, I'm just going to try to crashing. crunch into its left wing, bring it to the ground. All right, let's see. Uh, let's start with Scratchy first, being the larger lion. Let's see if he gets a claw. Or is he biting? Scratch it. Scratchy. Oof. Uh, actually, yeah. Enough to catch it against its side. Trying to keep it up. Ooh, dealing five damage. Considerable amount, though it still continues to rise as Gregory, give me your strike. Try to crunch it with everything I got. Do it. A balls. Uh, <laughs> a, ten. a ten. As you swing your hammer being accosted, swing it past these large creatures. You feel it. Uh, strike. As you hit it with a 10. Oh, shit. These creatures are large and not too agile, especially as they swarm. (laughs) How do you want to kill it? Just crunching into its left shoulder as it's trying to take off, making sure to take out its wing and just crunch it to the ground. All right, you swing it down. And fortunately for Luna... This thing only managed to make about close to 10 feet away, so you were basically just having your feet hovering off the ground as it was flying before Gregory just smashes it to the ground. And it falls dead. I got you, Luna. As, you got this. As Luna falls on her feet, not prone. Why was it falling? He's trying to fly away with you. He was going to fly away with you, but then Gregory and the lion tore him apart. And it seems like that's all they can do on their turn. Lions! Slashy, take this one down. So Slashy. Eh, where's my ruler? Brr. This way. Yeah! I'm gonna get you. Okay. And then Scratchy, go for the other one. The other one. The other one is currently 10 feet off the ground, oh. but this creature's 10 feet tall, so we can reach him. Hey! All right. Let's see the distance on you. Yeah! Seems like... Scratchy? Slashy? Slashy. The top one (laughs) manages to sort of gauge its distance, rear itself up, and run before jumping off the ground. And considering that this creature is now surrounded by others who are allied to it, it's going to get advantage on its pouncy, pouncy, pounce. And that's definitely enough to hit it. Let's see. Dealing six slashing damage, tearing to this creature. Its claws catch into its shoulders. And it needs to make a strength save. Or get knocked to the ground. Let's see. And you are... As it is pulled hard to the ground. This vulture is almost being dropped to its stomach, trying to lift off the ground. (laughs) But the lion's claws keep it pinned until it pulls itself off. And this other one? How far are you? A little too close. Let's see. He's going to come charging forward. And again, with the allies surrounding him, going to try and claw this creature. (laughs) Jesus. Let's see. As it just reaches up and catches it. And how does the lion kill this thing, Persephone? Bring it to the ground with a mighty paw. 
and just slams it into the ground with its strength. Our lions are good lions. <laughs> yeah. So like you're in a space there. And, and slashy to make an appearance in, in the canonical game. Oh. <laughs> All right, Persephone. Your order's given. These lions strike your prey down. There seems to be one left, and he's knocked to the ground right now. What do you do? All right, I'm going to move over there, and then I'm going to thorn whip it. Thorn whip it? It is It's melee a melee attack. weapon attack. Although it's not within five feet. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, Hold on. Uh, never mind. Well, you don't have disadvantage. Melee it's not disadvantage. Attack. It's just not advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So, I make it sure. Okay. All right. As you whip this thing on the ground, and once again, like the lion that you just sort of eviscerated, this thorn whip seems to catch around his body and deal damage. Ooh. As it tears and rips through its feathers and its flesh, you can see just feathers and blood flying up in the air as it rip cords around its body. Do you want to pull it closer to you? Yeah, by like five feet. All right, as it <laughs> just sort of slides along the ground, leading this trail of blood as Persephone seems to be reeling this thing in. That's my turn. Terrible person. <laughs> All right, Luna, you're standing next to a prone creature with a shadow blade in your hand. <laughs> Dabble. You don't want to just like pet him as he gets dragged away. <laughs> as you pull out your powerful shadow blade and you bring it down on top of him, that will definitely hit. Give me that damage. Ooh, how do you want to kill him? <laughs> After I stab it, it just starts screaming very terribly, wrapped with the nightmares of its dreams, and then falls out. Oh, yeah, you know, as you do. Casual. <laughs> The buzzard thinks of his family and how they're just being massacred. You know, <laughs> usual buzzard nightmares. As his body flops, pinned to the ground, blood pouring from its body in almost every direction, your final strike hits it, its body convulses, it screams, looking straight at you before everything just goes still. And it drops to the ground dead. All right, can we get our gold now, please? After a few moments, the crowd seems to be more interested now, realizing, hold on, these people seem to be surviving longer. Some people start sitting up in their seats, putting their food away, watching you. And again, the fire <laughs> burns in the brazier. Back. As Magnus McDonald appears again. I'm going to thorn whip it every time it does that, just <laughs> because, screw him. And just tearing through this fire, this smiling face that seems unfazed by the damage. Well done! That's two rounds! How much longer can you survive? Oh, let's see. What's up next for our little valiant C4? Six? I don't really know. Oh, but I know now your seven would be poorly missed here for numbers. Well, numbers would be very important. As again, <sighs> the fire vanishes. Take on whatever the hell you got. I just fucking light up my hammer and light. Oh yeah. But what if it's a math test, Gregory? How good are you with those? Uh, I'll leave that one to y'all. As to do, oopsie. Once again, the side doors <laughs> open, and you can see shapes moving through them. Although they're not as big as they were before, they weren't large, lumbering beasts. No winged creatures. They are small, almost humanoid. Although they seem, they have one, two, three, four arms down by their sides. Their movements are sort of stiff, like almost mechanical. Their heads sort of twinging to and fro. It looks like they have two long strands of hair sticking at the back of their heads, but it doesn't move like hair. It moves stiff, like a helmet. If they are wearing a helmet, they have strange-looking eyes. Unblinking, large, and insectoid. As these strange warriors holding spears in one hand, curved blades in the other, begin to make their appearance into the arena. Yo, well, the poster did not say anything about being fucking MTOF compatible. That's not fair. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm You're dead. 
Do, do, do. All right. Luna had her turn. Samantha. Oh, God, it never ends, does it? Yes, I'm going to move my piles of bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, and trying to figure out which... Uh, let's see, Luna's over here, Persephone's over there. Uh, fine. As the large black snake just woof, leaps uh, the full distance from me and just almost seems to tackle itself onto this guy, just grabbing onto the neck, and the rest of the tail just following right after, just wrapping itself around him, uh, attempting to constrict his movements as much as possible. Uh, it'll fuck up his decks or something. I don't know. On um, which one? Uh, second from the top, on the right side. On the right side? Okay. As the snake uh, leaps onto him. Get a feel for these guys. I'll cast Eldritch Blast, but I'll do it, uh, you know, the cool urban way, and I'll turn my scepter sideways and load two <laughs> arrows, whoosink, and uh, split it up. One going at top from the right, and the other going uh, uh, second top from the right with the hex on. So I got to turn the hex off. All right, top right boys, give me those attacks. Ooh, thanks for the subscriber, Biamoto. Welcome to the pride. Uh, Eldritch Blast. Here you go. Pew, pew. Turn it sideways. That makes it stronger. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the top guy. Boom, okay, see that. Damage. Oh, yeah. It seems like as this blast comes flying at it, it reacts almost instantly as this Eldritch energy comes spiraling at it. It raises its arm, and it actually crashes into the carapace. It almost looks like it blocks until maybe just the extra force granted by Gregory allows it to crack through and then <laughs> damage it. Ew. Dealing considerable amount of damage, <laughs> but it still stands. Its arm almost falls useless at its side, almost just drooling the strange green yellowish liquid as it continues to move toward you. And at the same time, simultaneously, the other blast. Oh god, so close to a crit. <laughs> that definitely hits that one. This one just kind of crashes right into its chest. And dealing. Ooh. Well, sometimes that happens. Almost oh, this one, almost, this one seems like, though it doesn't, it, there's no way to really dodge it, especially surrounded by its allies, so instead it just bolsters its chest and crashes in, and again, you can see the spray of greenish-yellow liquid pour out of its body, although it doesn't stop its movement as it continues to approach. All these buff counters on you, Greg. Got Bliss, and I got Holy Weapon going. Uh, his his version of Holy Weapon, not yeah, keeping track of the turn. At some point, he's just going to be a bunch of buffs. I'm assuming we're gonna be here for a little bit, so I'm tracking the turn. You gotta go full wow, so you gotta track, you know, your 32 buffs and make sure to refresh on proper rotations. Uh, as that is the end of my turn. Alrighty. As the rest of you are starting, starting to prepare yourself, some of you casting spells at fire, others enchanting your weapons, you stop and turn and realize, oh god, there's more of these things, and they begin to move. Let's see. Do 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 do. As they're walking, you can sort of see them like bumping heads with one another. Their antennas sort of clacking and clattering. And every time they touch, there's a slight strange... Luna, you can especially hear it. The strange tittering vibration sound as their antennas sort of poke one another. And immediately, those on the left begin to break out into a sprint. They go and do... do, do. Let go. Do, do, do. Oh, they're fast. Do, do, do. Look out, Slashy! is busted. We thought this was balanced. Yeah, I need to balance this. This You can move twice your speed? What is this? You start using like the center, like dash points or something. You can use some dash in a turn. dash points. One of the wounded creatures surveys the area. Again, with its ally sort of bumping heads, raising one of its strange spears and strange, like, bladed... Looks like, a, like some sort of strange chalk rim or something. And their antenna sort of point off, almost scanning you guys. As one of them... Goo -goo 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 -goo, comes up here. And he's gonna make a couple slashes at you. Oh, no. Let's see. Oh, Jesus. 
<laughs> okay, one of them pulls out its strange-looking halberd, like this long, curved blade. It looks, like, it looks like a halberd, like a blade on the end of a stick, although the end of it doesn't seem to tip to any sharp point. It curls almost infinitely, like a strange helix, as it just like, tries to carve it into your side with one of its hands. And let's see... You! Ooh, yeah. As it manages to catch you with a strange weapon, it looks like it's, it wouldn't hit you on the first swing, although it turns its hand in the middle and catches the other end of its spear in the middle of the swing and then turns it and catches you with a sort of a tricky strike, dealing two slashing damage. Those aren't words. <laughs> slashing damage! As I'm going to need a con save, as it seems like this pain, although not great, might be enough to disrupt your magic, but we'll see. Oh, but you managed to hold on to your spell. The other weakened one, still bleeding from its chest, also seems to come on my hair. Catching you around the flank as you're sort of reeling from this blow, it comes around the other side. Ah, I can't lose my lions. Okay. And this one holding in its hand this strange round blade. It looks like a handle that's surrounded by three long, looks like a star of sorts, as it sort of spins it in one of its hands almost infinitely, as if it has no joints in its wrist, and just tries to carve up your side. Nope. But you manage to catch it, and then between the two of them, both of them reading each other's movements, they stop and try to strike around you simultaneously, as one's going to do its own other spear attack. Kaka. Yeah. All right, that will hit five damage. I need another con save. Ah. As these things seem to be. Oh. Ah. And with that, that strike I'm catching you off guard. Two simultaneous hits. One soon coming. You feel this wavering in the air, and then the lions. Wait! Wait! No! <laughs> and, Pause. And then the last strike comes in as you're sort of losing your focus. Although you managed to catch it with your shield, pushing it away. And these creatures down here, let's see, how far can you move? Yep, yeah, what did you plan? You planned, ooh. 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 They'll also be speedy boys. Do, 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 do. And do, 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 do. And that'll be their turn, Gregory. These creatures have advanced on you fast. One of them seems to be striking down Persephone, although she's not fallen yet. It seems like they've distracted her enough that these creatures around you, these lions who've been helping and protecting you, have instantly vanished. Oh, hell. Pondra, got my hand. Yes, I'm just going to try to bash into the right side of this creature in front of me, trying to slam him into his buddy on the left. With all my might, I'm just trying to try to knock these things down one by one. All right. Strikes up the gauze. Give me that swing. Ooh. Ooh. 17. That'll definitely hit it. As it seems like, though your swing is reckless, guided by the strength of your gods and the light in your hands, you manage to strike it and deal a hefty amount of damage. Holy heck. And again, as you smash into its body, you can hear this crackle as it, it seems like the hammer actually caves into its chest and it should die. This thing should have its ribs torn and its organs just spilling out of it. Although it manages to keep standing, although shaking now. As if it has some strange warrior-like resolve. Or perhaps it's maybe it's just like a, a, an insect or a machine, unthinking and unfeeling. Oh, hell. I did not announce my smite, so. That's it. Thinking this thing should be dead. Just recoiling at it. Like, oh, hell. It don't look good, yo. But, uh, that's my turn. Alrighty. Persephone, your lions are gone and you are surrounded. I'm going to try to get myself out of this little badness here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take it there. And I'm going to hold my hand out to them as four glowing red crystals surround them in a circle, and I'm going to cast Moonbeam on them. Ooh. First time we see a Moonbeam. Yeah. They don't cut you, though. Did it go? Why didn't it go? Uh-oh. Roll 20 Y. Okay. Uh, let me find it in the other list. 
There we go. All right, as you summon your moonbeam, let's see. Draw it real quick. I'll draw it white because it's a moonbeam. It's a 10 foot radius? Uh, five foot radius. Five foot radius? That doesn't sound right. Well, five, oh, wait, hold on. That's all I got. Eh. There you go. Okie dokie. So, where are you catching him? Right in the center point. All right, let's see. Hold on a second. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. There we go. All right. Let me see that moonbeam again. Give me that spell card. I can double check what it does. Uh, it's not giving the spell card. It's being funky. Okie dokie. One sec. Start of the turn. I figured it was start of the turn. Just to check. Did it first time effect, it or starts its turn there. All right. As it seems like this light comes shining down, even though it's the middle of the day, this bright silvery, this dim rather silvery light fills this area, and these creatures seem to be caught halfway inside of it. As they're starting to sort of, they don't seem to really react to it, although these things don't seem to react to much anything. Anything else you want to do? Oh, did you move away from them without disengaging? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to do the the thing. If you move it away without disengaging, they're yeah, going to get attacked off on you. Yeah. All right, as one's going to swing out at you with its strange looking halberd. Oh, uh, yeah, that just barely hits. And that slashes into you for four damage. The other one's swinging out at you with its strange looking spinny blade star thing. But that one just yeah. doesn't seem to hit you at all, ever. <laughs> one of them's slacking. All right, and you get your moonbeam off. Yes, I did. Uh, oh. Damage from that? Or not? Nah? They will at the start of their turn. As it seems like this light is starting to fill the area and surround them. Again, they don't seem to react to it instantly. It's hard to tell if it's affecting them not yet, but maybe it needs a little bit of time. Coolio. Yeah. All right, that's my turn. All right, Luna. Surrounded by creatures again. Move these out of the way. Could this guy just like move like you know, five feet down? Acts politely. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll, uh, I guess I'll booming blade him. Boom! I'll definitely hit him. Nice. As you carve it in this creature's body, dealing to do ooh, a considerable amount of damage. And oh, you're level five now, so you do a little extra damage too. The combination of mental and physical damage roiling this creature's body. It seems like the moment you strike it with your shadow blade, it's intended to shoot up and just start spinning around. And where these things didn't really seem to react to damage, now they just seem to start convulsing. And you see this strange tittering from its clacking insectoid mouth. As his body seems to be spasming now. Wait a minute. Where's the pillar? Oh, it's, it's basically right here. I think I moved him on top of him. <laughs> I couldn't see it. Basically, you're right next to him. This thing's standing like right around you. There you go. It's coming right around the edge to get you. All right. Uh... I'll like, move. No, I'll stay here. I'm good. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Holding your ground and holding your dagger, defending yourself against this creature. Samantha! I use my rest points to gain the effects of a short rest. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. this is... You use your regeneration to immediately get your long rest back in the middle of combat. <laughs> Only benefit from one long rest in a day. <laughs> also, reju rejuvenation took fucking eight hours. This 
work? Mer? I believe in you. Come on, Samantha. Ten feet, is it a target? Or is it just, no, it's a target, okay. Shit, well that doesn't work. Uh oh. What do you believe in? What do you mean you believe in me? All I have left for cantrips. <laughs> What's else do you use? Everything. Armor of Agathis and, uh... Oh yeah, that's right, you did use that, okay. That hex. So now I get to, uh, Eldritch Blast. Believe in me. What, so you want to handle these guys? Because you can finish him off and then kill him or something? So then I'll handle uh, these guys or something. Uh, as I'll guess, I'll Eldritch I'll Blast with disadvantage. All right. Readying your magic against this creature, trying to blast it with all your force, although the aim may be off. Ooh. Let's see. And both of those, it seems like even in this desperate situation, you managed to keep enough cool, enough focus that both your shots hit. Give me that damage. Ooh. One especially crashes into its body. You actually see it strike one of its lower arms and just the whole thing falls off. And the other one comes up and crashes into its shoulder, tearing off almost a piece of its... It looks like it's wearing armor, although when it comes off, it's obvious it's a part of its body. As you deal a healthy amount of damage. Kabam! That's it. Okie dokie. All right, these strange creatures, the ones starting in this light, immediately got to make a save, as it seems like they're not reacting until a few moments, and then you can see their armor beginning to smoke, the wounds that Samantha gave them beginning to boil and roil over as this radiant light pours out. And let's see. It's and a strength huh? strength save, but it's not a strength save. I know, it's a calm save. <laughs> nice. As, oof. Yeah, they don't seem to make it as the light just begins to burn into them. Taking five damage, was it? I'll let you roll again, Persephone. Roll your moonbeam damage. Uh -huh. You want me to just do another moonbeam and then do damage? Just do another moonbeam with damage. Because you're just using that to activate it. Yeah! <laughs> As you burn into this thing, the, the light actually seems to boil up into its body, and you can see little spouts of this green-yellow liquid poofing and pouring through the cracks in his form. As one of them seems to be standing on death's door, the other, oof, also in a very bad state, and immediately as this thing starts to burn them, they... <laughs> pull themselves out of their situation, surveying the area, and then da 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 Oh, here we go again. Coming back at you. Let's see. Bars. Two halberdy attacks coming at you, girl. Ba-bam. Ba-bam. No one, no! The other one coming up with its spinny star in its hand, its wrist seeming to just undulate and vibrate. Although, as, as they're attacking you, you're also not just dodging their attacks, but also the spatter, as it seems like their wounds are opening up and just making a big gory mess. Eh. Eh. Although the last one, some of the gore gets into your eyes, you try to wipe it away, and it gets an attack in, dealing three damage. Ah! Seems like these attacks are many, although shallow. More con saves. More con saves. Just one. Just one. Although you're definitely more focused this time, and your magic stays put. Let's see. These creatures around here. Oof. One's going to come up here. Turn and face you, Gregory. The other one's going to come up here. Oh, actually, how far can you make it? Uh, yeah. Come up to Samantha. Let's see. Starting from the top to the bottom. Damn one boy. coming up from behind you, Gregory, is going to try and stab you twice or slash you twice with a strange halberd. Ba bam oh. Catch it into your side, dealing a moderate amount of damage. Just very quick slashing attacks as the other one. Oof. Yeah, still managing to focus on your spell. The other one comes up from behind too. Oof. I'm just barely missing as they will kick out of that one. All right, the one to your left that you just buried your hammer into sort of shoves itself into your body. And it seems like rather than trying to use one of its weapons, it's just going for a bite. Its mouth open wide, the strange mandible as it just starts to sink itself, trying to sink itself into your shoulder as it's going to chomp you. 
as I just shove the <laughs> handle of my maul into its fucking mouth. Get the hell away from me! And reaching up from underneath, you can see one of these small hands, not clutching a weapon, just tries to catch you, trying to reach into your armor and try to grab at the soft flesh. Although still too tough, too hardy. Yeah. All right, the one next yeah. to you, Samantha, to the west, is bearing down with its strange spinning star in its hand. It's you, this thing, building up like a machine until it's whirring, and it tries to swing it down like a buzzsaw. Oof. Dealing eight damage. Although, I'm assuming you still have your armor up, right? Oh, you're muted. Muted. I was pushing the wrong foot pedal. This is the last of it, uh, so they take 15. And All right, as this thing carves finish. into you. Yeah, as this thing carves into you, this thing starts tearing into your flesh over and over, but the scale is protecting your body, fling into it like bullets, and just tear into its fucking body. Move you it back. Two damage? Oh, God, maybe you back. Eh. You take two damage because you had six left. No, I had eight left. Oh, there you go. You got hit for nine last time, right? I'm bad at math. Whatever. I take two damage. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That would be two because it'd be 17 total. Yeah. Fucking do the minus on temporary hit points. So I just try my best. Yeah. As it seems like I finally get through the scale and you take again a minor slash to your body of this thing. This thing definitely took the worst. Creature below you to the southwest yeah, is also going to try to reach out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you have your hex up. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, and it seems like that surprise. These things managed to get through your armor. That shock manages to drop that focus, and the snake falls from this creature's body. Yeah, like, it disappears kind of like, a, almost like a, like a, like those fucking shitty ash fireworks. Mm -hmm. You, like, put on the ground, you light up, <laughs> yeah, the snake and it grows. Yeah, the... yeah, the black snake just starts turning to ash from tail up to head. It's like, yeah. It's very, it's All very right. powerful. It doesn't like to go out that way. <laughs> Hashtag not blessed enough. As the creature down to the southwest of you is going to get two strikes out at you. Seems like reaching out with a strange curved halberd. Wada! Wada! As you're more keen to the damage heading your way, you're able to deflect it and dodge the strikes. The one to the southwest, southeast rather, coming at you with its little halberd in his hand. Going, yeah! Oh. As I carve into you, now no longer protected with armor, dealing eight damage. And it's another swing. Oof. This one, it catches into your wound, and then immediately the second set of hands grab onto the spear and just pull it. Getting a good strikeout, dealing five damage. <laughs> and last but not least, this one, shaken by, it seems like Luna's strange energy, now finds its focus and takes two strange, reaching up with a spinning star, trying to catch you, Luna. Well, Oof! Seems like as its stupor breaks, it immediately reaches out and carves into you, Luna, dealing six damage. And the second strike comes in. I'm assuming an 18 hits, unless... Uh... I will... What's it called? Shield, that one. <laughs> What's it called? Okay, Toman. What's shield called? He's never <laughs> used it before. <laughs> That's true. As this thing comes close, looks like it's about to carve in just as deep, but then your magical force shield protects it, pushing it away. And yeah, that's all they can do. Gregory. I want to say one dude didn't attack me. Uh, I got this attacked attack four you. times. Yeah, you, you got attacked by this guy, and I uh, got attacked by this guy. He got attacked by this guy. This guy. I'm going to use the arrow for this. This guy attacks Samantha. This guy attacks Samantha. This guy attacks Samantha. This guy attacks yeah. Luna. These two attack them. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I guess I was just expecting six attacks to come my way. Huh? All six right. Nice. I'm the dude that just me. fucking tried to bite in at me as I pummeled into him. I'm just going to push him away. And I'm just going to try to crunch his head with a more measured strike at this as I'm trying to eye up the guy slashing out Samantha. I'm going to try to crunch into him. All right. Give me that crunch. Oh, yeah. Ooh. As I will pour a smite into him just to make sure as I crunch into his head, you just hear the secondary resounding <laughs> as light energy just pulses through the hammer. Nice. 
How do you want to kill it? I just crunch his head into a nasty green goopy mess. <laughs> As I just take his body to the ground, I'm just gonna round out my hammer and like a golf swing, I'm just gonna bring it up into the side of the head of the creature and just bashing down at Samantha. This time, throw it away any real measure, just trying to do as much fucking damage as I can. So, use a great weapon, Master. All right. Ooh, nice. Ooh, yeah, that'll definitely hit. Crunch into the side of his head. Oof. <laughs> Sack to do. Oh, that's not you. That's not you. How do you want to kill this one? Bring it right up underneath its weird chin, its chin and just. If I can, just pop its head off with my golf swing. Oh, yeah. The, the swing is so fast and so heavy. Samantha, you just see a gray blur. Woof, and poof, this, loud cra- this loud crackle. And it almost looks like someone just kicked a ball as this thing that was once accosting you with its weapon is now standing headless. Samantha, you're all right. You know, besides the non-stopping bleeding, yeah, I'm pretty good. Thank you for getting that one off my back, though. Yeah, I got one more, and then I'll get to you. As I'll turn sort of back-to-back with Samantha, facing off with this thing, trying to make sure that it's not going to be going after Luna either. That's the turn. Okie dokie. Persephone, these creatures are pursuing you. I'm going to try to kite them again, just... Move away. <laughs> You're just going to run in circles. circles. All right, are you disengaging? <laughs> no, I'm just going to try to not get hit. All right, they're going to try and stab and cut at you. One with the strange halberd. Do an 18. This, it seems like these things are growing wise to your actions and your defenses, and they're catching into you, dealing nine damage. Oh. And the one reaching out with its spinning blade, also hitting. It seems like they're learning in this fight, getting stronger as they go on. Oh, hey, this is not good. Dealing six damage. This time you pull away. Two con saves, baby. Oh my god. Now this is what it's like when you get hit, huh? (laughs) Oof. Ah! That first strike catching off guard. Maybe just the combination of them. Your focus on your magic shimmers and the light shining down fades as your moonbeam is gone. There goes that I plan. Uh, let's see. Samantha, how do you look? I can't see you. Gregory's on your health bar. I got you. I'm at literally Eight. half health. And she looks like it's, it's probably a, a, one of the most times you've seen Samantha ever covered in so much blood, at least her own. Hi. Okay. Each trail of blood oh. seems to slither down her body. Her <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm <laughs> bleeding snakes. <laughs> It's not oh, canon. Yeah, no, this is the episode. non-canon world, so I'm <laughs> yeah. bleeding snakes. Snakes of blood. Also, it's the beach episode, so everyone's wearing swimsuits. What uh-huh. the fuck? <laughs> Go to the bathroom. It's just snakes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So we're going to have little mm-hmm. sparkly balls of light flutter over to Samantha. I cast Balm of Summer Court on her. Ooh. Yeah. We're going to do two of those. So it's going to be 2d6. Okay. Do, do, do. Rip. Yeah. I tried. That was me trying. Uh, and it doesn't look too good. So I'm going to. I could still use like a cantrip, right? Yeah. Um, you didn't cast a spell. You just used your uh, spell. Yeah, ability. So you can. Ooh. Awesome. So we're gonna throw it with this. Wow. <laughs> okay. One sec. Yep. You're reaching out and trying to catch him. Give me that damage. How do you want to kill this thing? I want to pull him down to the ground with the whip first, and then let the thorns grow. But even larger because I'm even angrier because he did more damage. Oh yeah, channeling even more magic into its body. You managed to catch this thing in its weakened state, although very focused. It's captured and wrapped by your vine, and then immediately, almost sticking from one side to the other, you can see, like, it looks like this thing becomes a living icicle of crystals and thorns, as it becomes filled with holes one second, <laughs> retracts the next, and just falls to the ground in pieces. Yep. And I'm going to keep moving, because I think I have 20 feet left. Yeah. So we're gonna 
try to catch my breath over here <laughs> since they're chasing me and that's my turn. Uh, let's that see. I'm checking real quick. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. With a little bit of extra movement, you're gonna pull yourself around this corner, trying to avoid your costers. Yes. Luna. Down to help Samantha out, and I will stab this guy with the wing blade. Okay. Do, 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 do. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, as you get close to this creature, let me just change this real quick so you can actually see. You come running down to help Samantha, and as you swing your weapon, you see their antenna sort of twitch and twinge. And this one that doesn't seem to be paying any attention to you suddenly steps out of the way and almost expertly avoids your attack as if it saw it coming without seeing it. Uh, shadow moves up my body and grabs around my arm as slings it much faster as I quicken another living blade. Oh, <laughs> this one with your quickened with your quickened action. These things not seeming to realize how powerful and fast you are. You catch them unaware and you strike true. Ooh, how do you want to heck and kill them? Well, it's a tennis, just like kind of point out, just stiff before falling up on the floor. Just falls to the ground, shivers for a second, and then <laughs> falls dead to the ground. You have know, limits. It's half of them. Alright, that's it. Alright, Samantha. Uh, kind of assessing the situation. Uh, she's gonna try to sidestep and then try to get some distance. Okay, pulling them. You're not disengaging. All righty. Well, let's see one, two. There, there come the weapon. At least one coming down at you with his little spinny blade. Where are you at? There you at. Aga. As it carves into you, dealing four damage. And you're gonna blast him! Ooh, both of those will definitely hit. Hey. Dealing 12, 20, ooh. As both these blasts, even though it caught you, it seemed that its attack left it opening, and you took that moment. And you catch it twice in its body, almost tearing away its lower arms entirely. But you can see them just hanging by threads, and actually reaches over and tears them the rest of the way off, bleeding profusely from its wounds. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll use the rest of my movement to go there. Okie dokie, is that your turn? Yeah. I know something Okie dokie, one second. Do, 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 do. Alrighty. As it comes to these creatures, those who seem to survive the last onslaught, at least, you see their antennas rise up to the air and sort of twirl around for a moment, almost all of them in unison. As they stop what they're doing for at least a moment, and all turn at the same time. Do 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 do. Oh, hell. And they begin to swarm. I want to watch out. One of them runs right past you, Gregory. Although it stops to turn right to face you as soon as it gets within range, almost trying to turn and catch you unaware. Swinging its thing. Let's see. One, two. Get me. First one catching you. He's slicing you across your side with a strange halberd, but you're too quick for the other one. Too defensive. And in total... 
It looks like Luna's being surrounded, and it's going to have a total of six attacks coming our way. Let's go top, bot left to right. So the one down here with his little spinny blade, going to take two swings out at you, Luna. Bam, bam. Uh, I'll shield. All right, your shield pop up. What's your shield look like again? I don't know what it looks like on this character. It just gets surrounded by a bubble of shadows. A dense, shadowy bubble. As from the top right, let's see, a creature coming down at you, pulling out its strange-looking halberd, holding it in two hands and taking two quick swings. Ayah! Yeah, is that, that it? One will still hit. Ooh, it seems like its weapon quick and basically organized. These things seem to be mobilizing like very almost perfect soldiers. Gets through your armor, dealing eight damage. And the other strike comes in. Kaka! Although it just bounces off your shield, the one on the bottom right, still attacking. Pulls out its little little halberd and takes two swings. Bam, bam, bam. Although they're just bouncing off your shield, still strong after their onslaught. And Gregory. The hell of her. I'm just going to take a step, get right in by Luna, and just trying to crunch this dude into the ground below her. It's cutting at her. All right, give me that swing. Bring them all down. Nothing fancy, just trying to land this blow. All righty. Ooh. Well, yeah. definitely hit. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, uh, uh. I'm assuming. Yeah, how do you want to kill this thing? I just crunch it into the shoulder, and I just bring the hammer all the way down to the ground, taking it with me, <laughs> as I will just start to... Uh, yeah, fuck it. Uh, I just keep moving my way from one target to the next. Seeing this thing is focused on me, I just ignore it and just trying to knock one at a time of these creatures off of Luna as I just keep going around as I swing my maul. All righty. Give me another swing. Cut me first if you're going to cut me. Oh, ready to go. Uh, 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 uh. I might get rid of my bless. I see. Okay, give me one cut. He pulls out his little... Well, actually, as you're running away, you see one of the small hands lash out and try to scratch you. Eh. Ah. Ooh, just barely getting me. All right. Kaka. Dealing four damage. Shallow, but quick. Let me do that back. Nasty there you go. cut on my shoulder as I just swing back around and try to bash into this guy as well. Nothing fancy. Just trying to hit it. All right. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that'll definitely hit it. I don't think you can't kill it. How do you want to kill it? Uh, I just swing my maul all the way to my right, trying to bash it almost into Luna, but trying to angle it so it'll fly into the buddy up against the pillar, maybe squish him against the pillar as I just keep making my way around. There's two more, Luna. Got this. Hell. Uh. All right, Persephone. It seems like after some much bloodshed, your allies have finally pulled over and outnumbered these creatures. What do you want to do? I'm going to cast a frostbite on this dude. All right. In a second. Do, 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 do. Okay, there we go. All right. Gimme, gimme, gimme. On the top one or the weak one? Top one. Top one. As this frost begins to form over its chitinous body, it seems completely unaware, almost letting it happen as it takes, oof, considerable amount of damage. But bam, this frost begins to creep over its form and where. Where you would see blood pouring out, you instead see this strange liquid beginning to build and creep and crackle. Oof. <laughs> As its movements seem to slow, the antenna spinning on its head, sort of just twitching every so often. All right, and I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Healing Word on myself. All right. As you whisper your words, like healing ma or actually, what is your healing, what is your healing word look like again? Is that uh, a visual component? It just kind of looks like you've got like Wind Waker, Legend of Zelda, Fairy Sparkles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As you heal yourselves, your wounds begin to close. Yes, yes, yes. 
Nice. Okay, feel better. Alrighty. Say your turn? Yeah. Alright, staying behind your pillar, Luna. <laughs> I'll take my blade and cover it in the strange serial fire as I green flame blade that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm already fighting. Noise. Ooh. Damn. That's a good one. Let's see. Do, do, do. The weak one first? Yeah. All right, you carve into this creature's body fire and shadow mixing together. What color is your fire? Is it green or is it something else? And black. Black fire mixing with the shadow roiling. How do you want to kill it? What killed it? The psychic damage or the fire damage? Uh, the psychic damage, definitely. <laughs> the 24 psychic damage. <laughs> yeah, its eyes would just kind of bug out for a bit and then go a little, like, still catch a fire. It falls before it, before it catches the flame. Oof. Its body goes stiff and falls, and then when the fire begins to spread over it, crackling, and seeming to reach beyond just its shell and getting at the soft meat beneath. And the next damage jumps to the guy over here. Hold on, I think I have this. I don't think I changed this one from Booming Blade, because I think that one's supposed to... No, no, it's only two five here. I think it's right. the flat damage. Or, no, it's, it's right It's right there. It's LND8 plus your thingy. All right, as fire leaps onto its body, the strange black flame that reaches up one of this thing's arms, burning it, although again, just like the frost damage, it doesn't seem to react openly to this damage. Still focused on fire, and seemingly, now that its target has moved, looking at you, Luna. Uh, that's my turn. All righty. Samantha. Pew, pew! Pew! Both of those will hit! Give me that damage. Oof. How do you want to kill this thing as you do almost 30 goddamn damage? Uh, just seeing the opening, the fire, lighting this target up, uh, Samantha just takes her scepter, kind of eyeballs it, pulls back, aims up, <laughs> as uh, two green snakes just seem to plummet down straight on top of this thing, and just... <laughs> One just like latches onto his head, and the next one just <laughs> opens its jaw really wide and just latches onto his whole body, and they both just crunch down, and it's just when they disappear, there's just his legs standing there. The rest of his body oh, is vaporized. As it I wasn't shutting down, Brandon. I was just trying to see if I killed him or not. I had a description in my head, all right? Here we go. <laughs> you know what? Like, I don't have any more spells. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast. So I'm going to say that, all right? <laughs> all righty. As it seems like finally, after much battle and much bloodshed, these creatures fall. And there's a few moments of silence for you to catch your breath. Wipe away a tear with your middle finger? <laughs> Do do do. Well. Do, 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 do. Catching my breath, I'm gonna reach my hand up and pump some holy energy into my body. Sure. It seems like you guys have a few seconds to do stuff, so yeah. I'm gonna give myself ten hits. As I take a short rest and roll some hits. <laughs> As I sit here and suffer because all my benefits are long rest. <laughs> Cry. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a long rest class, you can pace yourself. You all right? Man, you got me pretty good that last one. They're chasing you all over the damn place, purse. Yeah, they wouldn't stop. And they kept both trying to hit me. And they got better as I kept missing. That's how you stay with the group. We shouldn't allow them to surround us. As I like take a look at the, like the wall itself, like what is actually over here? It looks like a line of braziers lining this thirty-foot-tall wall. They're unlit. It's hard to say if they really serve any purpose other than obvious lighting. The walls seem to be adorned with markings, although they're not really markings of any purpose. They're like sword marks, things that have been bashed against the wall, blood spatters. A lot of it seems to be pooling around the edge. Still wet for some reason, even though most of you did not come down here to spill it. Appear to be like any doors or anything into the, in the wall in this area. 
In this area, nope. It just looks like the only thing that leads out are the gates you guys entered in and the gates that seem to uh, seem to let these creatures in. All right, Magnus. What else you got? After a few moments, the crowd sort of starts sitting up in their seats looking. Your people mumbling to themselves. They actually made it that far. Wow. All right. We might actually get to see it this time. All right. And the flame... Magic's fading. Rises. You see Magnus standing there, smiling in the fire, clapping his hands. Now that was a show! Look at all of you! You made it through so many trials. So many monsters you faced. Creatures from far off realms and some close to home. Although... Well, why don't don't we end it with something a bit more interesting? Something far from home. Something far from anything anyone's ever seen. Though Magnus has seen it once or twice. Something amazing. Something fantastic. Something, something that'll certainly be entertaining. Why don't we begin the finale? As the gates begin to... Gates. The gates to the east. You feel the ground shaking beneath you as these large steps begin to echo throughout the arena. And as the gates thing. begin to pull open, you're something presses against the wood. And Magnus is, st- and despite all this happening, you see Magnus's flame still stays alit as he's watching intently. You've all faced the pawns. You faced the rooks. You've even faced a couple of the queens. But now you face him. You faced the greatest. You face <laughs> the wooden wall explodes, and you see something standing that looks. Like a dragon, although its body lacks the forms, the long legs, the great wings or the horns, but you recognize it. The great head full of many teeth, the long whipping tail, and the mouth that could swallow any of you whole. As this massive behemoth walks into the arena. Have a good it's going to be a little harder than the last ones. Just a little. Just a smidge. Just keep Dermit that Dermit. thing from getting to us, Persephone. Let's see. Do-do. Already got a plan. As it seems like its footsteps gave it away for many of you. Those quickest on your feet. Restarting the initiative. It doesn't, it doesn't Persephone. Us. It doesn't vocalize. It's looking. It's still coming through the door. Is the thing. You see, low like, low. So we, just, we just see its head like poking out as it's trying to get out. After, of after it busted down the door, this thing's coming through and looking at you. Gotcha. Well, as it's coming through and looking at us, the ground's gonna kind of shake and then burst upwards as I cast interrupting earth. Ooh. As you're preparing for this thing, summoning your magic. Let's see, centering it right on it. I assume. Yes. All right. And a I'll little you... a little towards our way. Oh. Less afterwards. So let's say 20 foot cube. Oh, that's not right. 20 foot cube. Bo, 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 bo. Ah. Two cubes. The race to draw battle shapes. <laughs> so you're drawing it like this? I love drawing shapes, y'all. Yeah. yeah. No, Just like that? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm assuming you want to mostly hey, be in it. Okay. As this thing, the ground, it seems like as it takes a step forward, the ground underneath it explodes much larger than you'd expect for a large footstep. As your magic takes hold, it must make a dexterity saving throw. It does not. As the ground shifts beneath it and it takes a healthy amount of damage. Roll me that 3d12, baby. Oh, this is the descriptor version. Let me see if I can do the attack version. Uh, okay. Uh, nope. Okay, I'm gonna manually roll the d12s. Yeah. Because it's broke. One, two, three. 
24 death, that's pretty good, yeah. As the ground explodes beneath it, it tries to stand and catch its footing as the ground just seems to be shifting around. These rocks sort of stabbing up into, or race bashing up into it. Although it seems with its great height and size, it seems like it only affects its lower legs as it takes to me. So, bam, bam, bam. Okay, that just slowed it down just a little bit. Meanwhile, I am going to go over job, this way. So we should probably move a little bit further away, like this way. And that'll be my turn. All righty, Luna. I move up a little closer next to Gregory as my hand just kind of starts glowing fire. So I reach out and it explodes right in front of me. That was the so opposite I had to go to. Oh boy! As you throw a fireball right into this monster's face, he needs to make a deck save and. Oof! It seems Ooh. like after catching its footing, maybe in the moment, it finds a lucky step and manages to sort of reach up and put its tail in front of itself reflexively, catching some of the fire, taking half damage. And I'm going to wait. Goodbye. All right. We'll face this thing together. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> She's going oh, to good directions, Gregory. Come on. The hell. I mean, I lost my shadow blade from that. Time when we were talking. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Alrighty. Samantha. Indeed, Gregory, we cannot face a creature that big with that many teeth in a head-on fight. We have to keep it coming after us. As you can see, she just uh, throws her scepter in front of her and it seems to float uh, with this green eldritch energy as her hands just get wrapped in what look like coiling snakes opening up where her fists are. She takes aim and almost seems to just punch two beams towards this thing uh, using her bonus action to infuse them with the poison. Oh boy! Take that wretched blast, you big old toothy meanie! Yeah. I don't know if I can outrun this thing, y'all. Run really fast. I'm gonna try to slow it down. Both of my legs <laughs> don't seem to be working right now. All right, let's see. <laughs> Both of those will definitely hit. Let's see. Give me that damage, and don't give you a con save as this stuff starts to inflict his body with some sort of vile ica. Uh, Ooh, look at that! Stay in. She's gonna run up, grab her scepter out of the air. She runs up to Gregory and just locks her arm around. Uh, what, what, what are you left-handed or right-handed? Like, where do you, what do you, what do you, which side do you hold the top of your hammer with? Uh, right hand. Okay, yeah. So she'll wrap around the, like the the, you're the bicep of your right hand, and then she'll kind of realize that her arm is way too scrawny to fully get all the way around all this muscle. God damn it! Hey, uh, no. Get out of here! I, come it's, on! It's fine. You, I don't want to watch you get eaten. <sighs> javelins! She like looks to your back. Do you have more javelins? I got, I got a couple left. <laughs> Huge javelins! Seems like my feet are just dug in the sand at this moment, though. If you don't run, who's going to take care of your kids? I can. I'll try. Do you want that? That? <laughs> In this canon, Gregory doesn't have kids. <laughs> yeah, they're all running dead! Yeah, you have to reroll Oath of Vengeance for the OVAs. Mm -hmm. no, I would totally do it. I just, uh, I just sort of can't right now. Because it's all happened at once. I'm not responding quite fast enough. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a choice in the matter, y'all. Uh, I'll use I used 18 feet of movement. I'll use whatever movement I have to try to fucking drag Gregory, but I You'd can't. You'd have to grapple yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, you can't grapple me. I mean, I can grapple you. You, take, you just take you just take your scepter and start like leading him. Like, come on this way. We go that <laughs> this way. way. We go in this way. 
as uh, the two beams connect with them and you can see like this horrible, almost like spider web like pattern of like just black and green ichor seem to spread across this creature's skin <gasps> as it fails its con save. And that's it for me as I will use the rest of <laughs> Scepter. Scepter is just like right next to you, like go this way, blink, blink, blink. <laughs> As that's it for me. All right, this creature finds its footing, and after this strange web, this pattern of poisonous energy enters its body and manages to stand up. Oh, look yeah, over you all. Damage, lol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> damage. I was busy role playing. Ooh, Ooh. Level 25, ignore damage. It's fine. Ooh, still a considerable hit, though, as he strikes barrel into its scales. This thing, though, despite it tearing to its body, it seems too thick to really pierce through it like these other creatures. As it still starts to come, it stands on its feet, looks over you all, and just lets out this loud, bellowing roar. As Omen freezes. <laughs> oh, yeah? Uh, he broke everything. Yeah. When this is over, over, we should we should make Magnus give us more than the thousand gold. <laughs> well, if he, well, if he doesn't, we should just tell everybody that we found him in a goblin cave hiding in in really gross hay, <laughs> and he oh, smelled like literal excrement. It's playing something called the King, but I'm not hearing it or the finale for that matter. Has anyone else been hearing music this whole time? I'm hearing, I'm hearing music. music. <laughs> I heard the roar too. But... Yeah, I heard the roar. Oh yeah, I hear that. it's really quiet. I had to like max out my volume roll twenty to hear it. Oh god! Here comes. <laughs> god, that was fucking hilarious. I was like, God, Jordan looks so shocked. He's not moving at all, though. He's so he's <laughs> stunned. Oh, no one's moving. Oh fuck me. Oh, oh fuck well, me. I'm not hearing. Uh, oh. Okay, one sec. There we go. All right, this creature comes running in, trampling oh, through this terrain, hell. and gonna take a big old dang old bite out you. As the, yeah, its mouth seems so large as it comes down, it could probably take a huge chunk out of the ground you're standing on beneath you, almost swallowing you whole. As it's gonna bite out in a sickly way. Oh, thank God. As it seems like in the second state, it comes down and crashes and bites right into where it aimed, right next to you, taking a big mouthful of dirt. <laughs> All right, big boy. Nobody's down here today. So I'm going to pick up my mall. Just visions going red. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring it down on top of its snout with everything I got. I'm gonna All rage. Right. Bash into his motherfucker. Angry rage. Ooh. Ooh. I'll lay really down into its it. snout as it collides with it, just crunching into it. You hear that audible <laughs> as a radiant energy just pours into this thing and the second collision occurs. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> 30 days. That's pretty good. As again, your strike rings true, powered by your anger, your muscle, and even maybe the divine comes crashing into its snout. You actually hear the bone crack as you seem to reshape its skull, although it's still standing, albeit a bit dizzy. I don't have bless anymore, so that would have been a 20. <laughs> I'm assuming a 20 still hits. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to position myself back in front of the group. We got this, yo! We got this. As the light of my hammer starts to fade a little bit more, about to run out. All righty. Let's see. For Stephanie, it seems like this thing has taken a healthy amount of damage, although it's now out of your spell's reach. Coming straight towards Gregory. Yeah, we're going to have. Do, 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 do. This goes click. We're going to have two more little fairy lights going straight for Gregory. Uh, it's a 2d6. Ooh, nice. Yeah, fix him up because he's right in front of the thing. Uh, 
and I'm gonna go ahead and cast a moonbeam on Dino. <gasps> Dino, no! Oh no, it didn't do it again. Uh oh. I gotta do it from the other table, which I never use. <laughs> there we go. There. That's a, a beam of light comes straight down like a spotlight on this creature's body. Simmering into its back or maybe its upper neck, but not quite taking effect just yet. Yeah, and I'm going to keep a distance. Yeah, I'm probably right here. Because I can. Ask All right. All righty. Then, uh... Okay, take a bit of chaos and uh, shoot him. A chaos ball at yeah, level two. Ooh. Oh, level two. All right. That'll definitely connect. Give me that damage. One and ooh, 14. Let's see. What damage is that? Five or eight? Ooh, which one does it do? Lightning damage. Lightning damage. Describe how that attack hits him. As it definitely does. What's it's it probably like? uh, still rolling and trying to bite Gregory to like shock its tongue and its tongue will go numb <laughs> and now it can't taste Gregory and now it loses interest. Oh uh, yeah, it's sick in state, shining brightly in its light, it's an easy target to strike. It opens its mouth, its glistening tongue shimmering in that pale moonlight and you strike it with electricity and its tongue just rides like a worm in its mouth. Anything else you want to do? I will continue around the fuck away. All right. Shamanda. Uh, will... Shamanda. And it seems like by now, is it the start of next turn? You're moonwalking earlier. End your next turn. Yeah. Shamanda. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> let, me just, uh, let me just moonwalk. Moonwalk. There we go. Mm, 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 mm. Just stood in a way. Uh, as I will throw up my scepter once again and get my punches ready as I will do another wretched blast. All right, the first one will have advantage as it seems like this creature coursing with its poison in its body guides your magic straight to it, the snurping in the air, slithering around all obstacles. Mm. As you get to finally use your class ability. <laughs> I know, right? There you go. Ooh, that first one will definitely hit. The second one will also definitely hit. Give me that damage. 17 damage. These strikes, the first one especially hitting true, catching this creature's body, weakening it as it seems to keep hitting over and over and over again. Are you also trying to make it sick again? Yeah, yeah that's why I did the, the punches. The punches are okay. always the wretched blast. And it seems to be standing on its last leg, but let's see if it can make its save. Oof, this time managing to just withstand the force of this poison it looks over at all of you especially to the man down beneath you and lets out another roar come on you big bastard that time does the, do you have music playing too because i can't hear that turn up yeah. Yeah. i got music playing yeah it's been playing weird but i didn't hear the music that's weird Music must have broke. Hold on. It's just really uh, quiet. I hear it. There it is. Reset it. Anyway. Yeah, now I can actually hear it. Okay, that's weird. All right. Is that your turn? Uh, bonus action action? Bonus action action. Uh, I use my second bonus action to... No. Um, come on, Gregory. You can you can do this. Just hit it as hard as you can. Just having a shouting match with her right now. Just fucking mauled my side, my hands open. Go on! All right. Cody is like going up to almost blindfold me because I almost don't want to look because, you know, OVA Samantha is much, much more squickish. <laughs> uh, don't die. My kids are already dead. There's nothing more you can take from me. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Still had the swimsuit calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. As the light now casting over its body seemed to be distracted by all these attacks, finally takes hold. Persephone, give me that damage. Do, 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 do. Let's see if you can cook a T Rex. Oh, that'd be fun. 
How do you cook a T-Rex? Oh. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, how do you cook a T-Rex? How do you want to kill this thing with this bright moonbeam shining down? So the spotlight, it's going to have what looks like little glitter flecks in them, and then they're going to just combust into tiny flames as they attach onto him. Almost like, like sticky fuzz. But like fire. <laughs> <laughs> so like its scale, its body begins to glow as its glitter begins to cover it. It's almost beautiful. The crowd actually sort of sits up in their seats to look as this massive beast becomes this almost an epitome of beauty and terror before just boom, it all takes hold. And basically, they're within this small scope. Larger, its body seems almost larger than where the spotlight's bringing down. It just satellite beams a hole through this creature. Its mouth opens up to roar, but there's no sound this time, only smoke and glitter as it falls and dies. Doesn't get one bite off on me, come on. I know, <laughs> it had one, and it got a crit and a one. All I want to do is get bit by a T-Rex. Oh my god. And it seems like in your well-placed and well-planned uh, execution, your technique. You managed to bring down this massive beast and Magnus McDonald just stares and watches looking over all of you. And then the flame that makes up his body turns as he looks over the crowd. Crowd's now just sort of trying to guess what happened and then they just erupt. Oh, that's not right. They start talking to each other apparently. They explode. Volcano! It's a volcano the whole time! It's <laughs> Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom! Go see it in theaters! <laughs> <laughs> Get the dinosaurs! The answer is it no! It was a the whole time! As they start just erupting and cheering, clapping their hands excitedly, after witnessing a well-put-on show, and then Magnus sort of surveying the area, his expression uncertain at first, starts to sort of nod and enjoy this sort of soundless clap as he smacks his flaming hands together well done valiant four well done honestly i didn't expect you to survive that but look you put on quite a show well done can't wait for the next episode when you signed on for the whole season right 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 oh, give us that goal or i'm gonna find you Oh, you can't find me, but if you want to try, you'll have to move on to the next arena. So what's it going to be? I guess we'll have to figure out next time on the Song of Rapture. Yes, we're going meta now. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm going to tear you apart just like my kids are torn apart. As the fire fades. <laughs> and you see, popping up along these braziers, fire goes... Small flames begin to erupt around these braziers, and walking out of them, actually stepping from the ember, seem to be these strange creatures, like men, made of fire, although they look like they're wearing some sort of strange garb, tight fit to their body, sort of this gray color, sort of a plain-looking hat, and they carry with them, it looks like some sort of, like, sickle or hammer, until you see them start just sweeping the floors as the bodies slowly but surely get pushed into piles. Oh, they got bigger somehow. <laughs> And incinerated by these men made of fire. Oh yeah. Good shit. And that is the end of the first episode of the Blood Bowl. Yeah. You guys managed to survive that. Well done. Just Fighting one bullshit at once. A one completed. Different <laughs> ending theme for the Blood Bowl. Uh, yes. Good job. Good job. <laughs> That's oh completely boy. fair. The first That's episode of the Blood Bowl that just completely dominated. That's excellent. My boss is sure happy with me. I hope there's a little Valiant 7, there's more of them next time, and maybe they'll be fighting new creatures in new arenas, constantly changing conundrums, constantly changing obstacles. What will they face? Who knows? You just have to tune in to the next episode of the Blood Bowl! That was amazing. That was well timed. God damn. That was great. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Good fun shit. goofy times. Yeah.
Yeah, it's the perfect. I did so uh, much work. It should be the beach episode. I demand it be the beach episode. Oh no! Descend into metadom. Uh, no, if it's the beach, the uh, odds of us doing a beach episode with Clyde involved are are unusually high. I feel like just the way the stars would align for that. I mean, it's the OVA, so it's not canon. He just he, he, he just has to be it. surrounded in a big like plastic bubble. No god. Oh, oh. oh boy. Here, here, just put on this and just hand him the shield. That's a pretty fun beach uh, toy. If people just get inside the ball. Yeah, he's the beach the ball. But yeah, that's sort of the idea with the Blood Bowl. It's going to be like, whenever we don't have a game or like something, like, you know, something gets canceled, we don't have enough people to play. It's like, yeah, let's fucking, I'll pull up a, one of my mini battle arena maps and just throw a bunch of monster ideas I have and uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah I liked it. <laughs> I just took, like, full advantage of, like, hey, I have these things that I've never used before. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect it's a perfect time to try out new spells. Exactly. That was fun. Good stuff. So we're having a rec stake for a while, guys. Yeah. Yes. Now we're going go to we're gonna yeah. go to our new hotel rooms for our new contractually obligated Blood Bowl phenomenon that we've signed on for. Oh yes, you joined the Blood Bowl. I didn't realize that a thousand gold was actually for an indefinite number of episodes. Yep, Magnus yep, yep. McDonald has to make money. <laughs> I so I guess the pawn shop didn't really yes. work out, huh? Oh yeah, maybe we'll be the only one. Who gets to do the thing? Jordan, do the thing. He's dead. What? Am I dead? I yeah. Don't. I wish to live. Oh my God. Do the thing. Do the thing. Julie, Julie do the thing. Do the thing. Which, which thing are you talking about? Just do the thing. The, the thank thing. yous and stuff. <laughs> the think. Thank you, everybody in chat, oh. for hanging out with us. There. <laughs> I hope you had fun. Jordan, completely oblivious to you, doesn't give a shit about you, wishes you were dead. Uh, <laughs> but I wish you had a good time nonetheless. Thanks for hanging out to us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks for hanging well, out, watching, hanging out in chat. All right, my bad. <laughs> that, that is a thing. Yeah. Well, that's the, the, I mean, I don't know. I did a thing last time that was weird that I like ripped out already. Um, yeah. That oh, is... your weird god voice. Yeah. God what voice. will happen next time on the Blood Bowl? Oh, exactly. no, I mean, Omen already did the did it with the with his little saw, and he actually gets to use for something now. So that makes <laughs> me happy. That's great. Uh, yeah, that's it. That is that is the the end all be all. Thank you so much for watching Song of Rapture OVA number one, uh, and I hope that you tune in uh, to our regular streams. Uh, we will not be having a stream this upcoming Friday. Uh, it is our DMs off week. Uh, so we'll be coming back to you with more Song of Rapture, real Song of Rapture, uh, on the 10th of August. Um, we in got addition a little taste to of the characters this time around, but no, the real hardcore, hard-hitting roleplay. Yeah, not the true yeah. versions of like what our characters are actually like. This is we're going to be doing silly versions, almost uh, caricatures. I think would be a fun way to do that. Just do caricatures of our characters for this. Um, so I'm gonna be, be super edgy and super like <laughs> fucking evil next time. It'd be great. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be deathly. Grr. Grr. Should have like mounted one of those lions and just charged into battle. Yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> hey, you were ripping shit apart. Yeah, conjure animals. Great fucking spell. Um, just murdering. Let's see, what else we got coming up on the 29th? Uh, we have The Expanse as we come back once again uh, into the middle of what's going on with Desmond uh, Coyle's family situation. The Artificer, <sighs> who has something not so mechanical to fix this time, his family. Uh, as he's rescuing them from, oh. with alongside the Outriders, uh, from the keep turned prison that his cousin entrapped all of those who stood against him uh we have just successfully rescued them last sunday which will be playing a rerun of that episode shortly after this so stay tuned you won't miss a thing uh and this sunday we'll be coming in right where that ends and figuring out what happens next and what challenges we'll have to face and whether or not we just put down his cousin once and for all oh i the time preserved tradition of the Coyle family. So be sure to turn in this Sunday for that. And also, we have breaking news. This Wednesday, August 1st, 
Uh, we are reconvening the Council of Dungeon Masters, or whatever, or something. It's the Council, I don't yeah. know. Um, except this time, we're just going to have myself, Omen, and Brendan uh, joining us alongside a special guest, uh, William King the second, uh, creator of Genuine Fantasy Press, an upstart company that is seeking to create third-party materials for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, he has an upcoming product coming out called the Compendium of Forgotten Secrets Awakening, uh, which is a uh, collection of intense uh, flavor and new patrons for warlocks, along with some new subclasses, new spells, and tons and tons of flavor all throughout the document. Uh, and uh, it's going to be on Drive-Thru RPG and uh, available through Amazon as well in hardcover format. Uh, so stay tuned for more information and news on that. Uh, that interview will be taking place August 1st uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern, so be sure not to miss that. Um, or like seven, seven, seven thirty, um, Eastern Wednesday. Uh, other than that, there is one last thing. The city of Selim Vale. A new campaign coming soon to Wednesdays, starting August fifteenth. Stay tuned for more information on that and all the wonderful players of from the family here at Lionhead Gaming who will be a part oh of that new God. game as you get to meet new characters and start from the very beginning in the adventures of Selim Vale. Until next time, may your dice always turn up 20s and may you always make every save. Ready, y'all.